You are listening to the Vegan Body Coach Podcast, all about optimizing your strength, fitness, and physique through a plant-focused diet. My name is Jackson Burton, and I'm a nutrition and training coach for vegans, the plant-centric, and plant-curious. I'm sitting down with athletes, experts, and influencers around the world to inspire you to create your best vegan body yet. Right on. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Gemma. Hello. Welcome to the Vegan Body Coach Podcast. Awesome. How are you doing today? Good. Just had a good sesh, feeling good, Yeah. Feeling hungry. Yes. 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 On to the feed next, yes. brunch spa. Yes. Awesome. But today, I wanted to have a good dive into a few things. Yep. Talk about your journey, talk about health and fitness, talk about your vegan experience, um, your competing, training for women, a lot of things. So let's dive straight in. Yep. Can you tell me a little bit about sort of what your journey is leading up to even transitioning to vegan and then getting into a health and fitness lifestyle? Yeah, definitely. So it has been almost five years. So it was August 2015. I just kind of did a trial, just like try to go without animal products for a month. And then like three weeks in, um, we just never went back. Um, So basically... I found that it was manageable enough. I was vegetarian in high school, but then I kind of just went rogue in that period between there. And then, um, yeah, after about three weeks, I went to like an Essentials of Vegan Nutrition seminar because I wanted to do it properly. And um, I felt confident with the tools and the stuff that I'd learned. And all of the other things made sense to me once I kind of started the ball rolling, like eating meat, but feeling really sad when you're driving next to a livestock truck right like now i don't like i can do something about that so yeah yeah, like it just um i built a bit of momentum and i got the resources initially so i felt good about it yeah yeah so what sparked that initial like what sparked you going vegetarian to begin with i watched a like a youtube video it's really grim but you know those like what happens to the baby chicks when they're not yeah okay I watched one of those videos like someone was playing it um in like year nine or year 10 and wow, that's soon, early. I know and as soon as I watched that I was just like traumatized and I was like I'm done with chicken yep. yeah so that was all that was yeah that would have been a while back too like I don't think there was much of that sharing going around early on I think like it was just like like just timing someone was yeah. what, playing it when we had obviously like a computer day right. at school yeah, yeah, yeah. or session whatever totally and um i was like oh no and i just couldn't like it made me feel really sad yeah so yeah so that was vegetarian and then you sort of had a, a gap between that yeah and then i just lost that connection okay. between yeah so and then you did this three-week experiment yeah what sparked that like why did you want to go into the, the vegan lifestyle Um, My partner at the time suggested just trying this Um, and then from there um, I was all about it like pretty open-minded like I'll try anything I was already kind of just building a bit of momentum with exercise so it kind of was hand in hand with that because it was like an extension of that eating more whole foods kind of made sense to me I'd been vego before and then cutting out animal products I was like oh this is completely doable and then from there it just stuck Like I've never had a moment of weakness of being like, oh, I really want chicken. Like there's no desire there. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think that was more from a animal ethics perspective? Like initially the the vegetarian was, but then when you went into transition to plant-based, you know, when your partner at the time suggested that, was he already vegan and was it because of, you know? No, he was like heavy meat eater. So just the fact that we just did this together was a helpful thing Yeah. because you can support each other. And um, it was just initially just like, oh, let's see how doable this is. It was definitely harder back then because there were less options and less awareness. Yeah, this was 2015. 2015. It's a while ago, yeah. Yeah, so there was just less awareness. Um, but I think it actually forced me to up my game with cooking and right. learning how to structure a plate. So I, I actually enjoyed the learning curve that came with it. Even though it was challenging, Like I liked the fact that it um, made me learn recipes yeah. and meal prep and things like that. Yeah. yeah, no, that's really cool. And it's interesting that you actually went to a seminar early yeah. on like i've never heard of someone actually yeah, doing that I, yeah as you said you don't do things in halves right same with a yeah, dietary yeah. change right because i'm not going to do it and then do it shit and then people say that was shit like yep. i want to give it a go properly from the out to then know that i've done it you know to the best yeah. of its ability so yeah it was like an essentials of vegan nutrition seminar it was on a sunday it was run by a dietitian and a naturopath and it was literally goes went through every micronutrient 
macros, ve- um, vegan sources, supplementation, case studies. Wow. So yeah, really in depth. Yeah. Did you come away with that quite confident? To yeah, so much um, because before that it was like, cool, we're just not eating meat. Um, thinking of a few things, but that gave me like a whole repertoire. And I got that. She actually emailed me that slide, that PowerPoint presentation that I still refer to to this day. Yep. Um, and I like printed it, obviously, yes. and, yes, you're and very stored it away. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't know. So like, I just wouldn't have done it otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that's a massive part of why people these days like you often see people that'll try vegan and they put up a youtube video or whatever yeah i went vegan and this happened and now i'm not or you know yeah, whatever. i wanted to avoid that completely. yeah do yeah. you think that's probably one of the things they're not doing is possibly investing time into the research of like i need to do this properly yeah i think like um things can become trendy and it's easy to get onto a bandwagon and i think that you need, you'd, you're doing a disservice to yourself if you don't um, do your research. Cutting out animal products is a big deal, mm. especially if you don't know um, where you're going to get iron from, especially if you don't know, you know, how much food you need to eat for your goals, things like that. Like, I don't know, like health is everything. I think mm. like as a society, we often can flip it and it's very reactive until something goes down and we start to pay attention. Right. But it's like... This is everything. Until yeah. you're sick, you don't realize how much, you know, how important it is. So we should be trying to nail it as much as possible. Don't get me wrong. I will still eat like some vegan junk food. But the base of what I try to eat is whole foods and that makes me feel good. Yeah. 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 And I think it makes you feel good, not just in terms of like... Morally as well. Yeah. Morally, yeah. it makes you feel good. Every yeah. meal is like, cool, I'm actually trying to make a difference. Yeah. Um, I'm doing what I can. Yeah. And then also every meal, like especially for me, every whole food meal that I eat, I'm, I'm like, yes, I crushed it. Like I got yeah. some nutrients, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, whereas I don't feel like that after having say like Lord of the Fries or something, yeah, no. but you know, that's totally fine. And, 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 in moderation. In moderation, it, yeah. yeah. Like I don't, same, like the taste, great. Yeah. But I never feel great after eating mm. Lord of the Fries. Like I feel just like, oh no, what have yeah. I done? Yeah. Um, I don't know. But when I feel like when I eat like a Buddha bowl or like yes. oh, a yes. big rice dish, it's like very sa- like satiating. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And you and going back to a point you just mentioned, you put up a post um not long ago about the the when you're sick type things. Like when you're sick, you suddenly realize that health is yeah the most important. Like nothing else matters. Yeah. I think it's such a good point to bring up. I think I also come from like without getting too grim but I came from like the point of view of like watching my dad who got diagnosed with terminal like a terminal illness he'd never took his diet seriously like had a terrible just the education wasn't there yeah and um then as soon as he got sick obviously it's too late but then he was like oh plants and this and that and he started watching documentaries and started buying books and I started like cooking for him and it was just really sad to see it's like you're 50 something mm. like and i get it i get it like you take it for granted like wholeheartedly but i just think like coming from that perspective i take my health so much more seriously because it's like yeah i mean who knows something bad could happen to me but i'm gonna do everything in my power to try to like look after myself that's right because even just like mobility issues like any thing like that like we're so um we're so lucky right i don't think we realize how lucky we are like we're so privileged Mm. i want people to understand how privileged they are and then they'd be more motivated to make the most of it yeah yeah no absolutely and i think people do take it for granted and they'll think oh i'll I'll, you know i'll do it later in life i'll get healthy then or like you know it's just convenient now i'm busy at work i gotta you know i'm just gonna have a bag of chips or whatever yeah um but yeah, you don't realize how important it is until something happens. I know. It's and then really you're kicking sad. yourself. I know. It's really bad. Like, yeah, I just, I will forever be driving home the point of just like, like health is wealth. Mm. And sure, like aesthetic goals are fine. As, but if that's your only goal, you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. Like what about the fact that you can walk without getting puffed or right. you can lift your shopping bags inside the house and, you know... You're not, you know, all of those I things. I love that, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah it's really health important. for life, right? Of course. Yeah. yeah. So for you, what does that healthy diet look like? Like you said, you know, mainly whole foods. And yeah. So what are some of the sort of cornerstones of a healthy plant-based diet? I definitely go into peaks and troughs. So okay. if, I, <laughs> if I have um, like balance is like a pendulum. 
So if work's going really good, then I will neglect my meal prep. If my training's going really good, then maybe I won't be doing as many courses to upskill. So it's a constantly a balancing act, but like my favorite dishes, like I love just like breakfast ideas that have like a smoothie. I'd ha- I've had o- overnight oats for like four years in a row. Yep. And I just change it up with like blueberries, almond milk or banana or dates, depending on how nutrient dense I want to make it, like how much volume. Um, favorite thing ever would be Mexican yeah. burrito bowls, burritos, <laughs> black beans, like loaded up and then rice dishes. If I want to add in like a higher protein thing, seitan, like yeah, in a stir yeah. fry. Um, Do you ever make that yourself, the seitan? Do you make yeah, it yourself? Yeah, but really? I just started buying it. I've never made it. It's not a good time. Oh, wow. Okay, like sure you can make it yourself, but like I've had many failures and I just will, it's, it's where do you buy that in Australia? Whole Food Merchants is near oh, us. Okay. We're very privileged with, with cool. where we are. They sell it in um, like strips and right. you can just marinate it. And so I'll just marinate that, cook it up and then put it in a stir fry or rice. Yeah. Or just have the easiest meal prep that I like to do is rather than actually having full meals sometimes, it's just have a massive serving of potatoes, have a massive serving of basmati rice, have your greens like um, broccolini, asparagus, whatever, another salad, some roasted vegetables, and then have some protein options. Because yeah. then I can just, depending on how hungry I am and what my day demands are, I can just put together a meal. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying you, you cook up a batch of like Batch potato, of everything. Yeah. Batch of broccolini. Yeah. Yeah, and then when you want to eat it, you just combine it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just simple without yeah. complicating it. And I think people, I, I talk about this all the time, people try to make their food look like an Instagram page, right? Yeah. I've done that before as well. Yeah. Yeah, but... It's, yeah. And it's not it's effective kind of for like no. 99% of the population who are no just one else cares. working hard yeah. and they're like, I just need to grab a food. Like, that's why fast food does so well because people just need convenience. Yeah. So why not make your own meal prep convenient? Exactly. That's why I think like things that are within eye view, think, whatever you can make as easy as possible to make a good decision is best like I always I'm a hoarder with my gym bag but like in my gym bag will be some snacks in my console in my car will be some snacks in my fridge will be those things ready to go in my pantry will be a snack drawer so it's just like I'm I'm constantly eating I eat a lot of food but the things that I'm grabbing and going are kind of like better options than if I was like oh no I've run lots of classes I'm really hungry I don't have any options like no one wants to be in that situation yeah because then you're going to go with whatever's convenient and that's not necessarily what's best yeah yeah i think not preparing is just setting yourself up for failure and most people are not are too busy to not prep you know what i mean like people if they're if they're too busy they're not going to be able to ever have time to make like a decent meal so you have to prep in advance and you have to have it there ready for you yeah. Um, even with me, like while I'm traveling right now, it's like, okay, I've got a full day today, but I've got a couple of protein bars in my bag because, yeah. you know, it's it's on the go. It's just, I need some protein, Exactly. you know, and that those are options that are going to be, you know, not ideal, but they're better. far better than me grabbing Lord of the Fries, which 100%. I would grab, but yeah. yeah. 100%. I think um, also I go both ways, right? Because we come from a privileged position where we're personal trainers, we're coaches, we have such a large emphasis on what we do Mm. but I think sometimes I need to step away from that and realize this is Gemma and this is where I'm at and my situation but I don't really think that that's necessarily realistic to put the same like obviously strive for Mm. that but you know Karen three kids full-time job like it's kind of like do what you can with what you've got and maybe you can't prep every single meal like obviously that's the goal but just there's other things you can do that are working towards that, like, you know, a better kind of food um, relationship and eating more nutrient meals. Does that make yeah. sense? No, absolutely. Yeah. I just feel like I often like can get stuck in my own head yeah. being like, oh, do this, do this, do this. But you just need to step away and realize how. Yeah. I mean, we're in the fitness industry, right? Are. So yeah. it's like. We can train. What time is it? We just trained at 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's not normal. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And then yeah. we can go get a, a, a really good meal. But Great. like you said, Karen can't do that. She's yeah. busy with the kids. So. Yeah. We it's have just to step being, back. Yeah, it's just being empathetic yeah. and but also not being a victim. So it's like, yeah, empathy, how can we work around your circumstances, but also not I can't do it because mm. of XYZ. Because yeah. there's always 
something you can do. That's right. Yeah. I mean, there's people that are doing it with five, six kids. Exactly. They've got a full-time job. They're killing and it. Yeah. They're still making it work, right? Yeah, so it's like, exactly. where is it on your priority list? And it's coming back to health. All of it ties in. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If yeah. you're crushing it in your in your professional career and you're a CEO and you're making all this money and blah, 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 but you reach 55 and you've got cardiovascular disease, yeah. well, what does that give you? You know, you lived a great short period of time in your life, but yeah. where was the priority? And Priorities now you, yeah, yeah, that's right. So, and I think actually really quick coming back to you talked about balance. Um, balance is a really interesting one because people think balance is like everyone's tr- striving for it, right? It's perfection. I need balance between work life, gym life, food, whatever, but you never get it. And balance is like, you're literally like the nature of balance is you're walking a tightrope and you're being pulled Both ways. either way, yeah. right? So you'll have times when, like you said, your your food or your nutrition or your health may suffer a little bit because you're being pulled towards a professional development side. Yeah. And then vice versa. You know, it's never going to be perfect, but the key is that we're we're striving for the middle ground. It's an awareness. Yeah, and we're not we're not feeling guilty or beating ourselves up about being pulled either way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's why I think. Um, you need to check yourself sometimes. Like maybe you're really crushing your gym goals, but when was the last time you caught up with friends? Right. Or maybe you've gone out three weekends in a row and gone into party mode. That doesn't happen, but just hypothetically. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then how is your how's your training? Su- like is your training suffering? So it's just an awareness of like what what is important to you. Are your are you working towards that? etc totally yeah no that's super cool yeah so for yourself swinging back a bit when did you go like sort of into fitness was that always a career choice for you or no i had um a corporate job and i was working in marketing um promising career like promotions doing really well but it wasn't satisfying so like an example would be getting into the office before i would Come, I would do the thousand steps every morning. Then I would suggest that the office does like a lunchtime walk together. So I would suggest would have like a fruit bowl. Wow. And then after um, after work, I would probably train. So even though my like focus was like doing really well, working for the boss, working for the man, my um, heart was like, oh, I can't wait to train this morning. Right. I'd be this like everyone's like haven't ha- hasn't had that coffee yet and it'd be 8 a.m and i'd be like buzzing around the office <laughs> like it's too much i <laughs> yeah, get it yeah. but you know what i mean like i it was clear from anyone looking at me from the out that yeah. my passion lied in fitness but right. it wasn't it wasn't always that like in uni i had like two or three jobs i was very career motivated i just wanted to crush like my like do really well work my way up and then um I was kind of like this, again, back to the pendulum. Um, I was like, this is, I'm working so much. I have no regard for my health because it's working and then going out and doing these things. I was like, my health is suffering. Like, this is not okay. So I just started a boot camp. No, had no fitness level. I think I ran to the toilet and vomited. Wow. Yeah, it was a boot camp next wow. door, right? <laughs> um, this is five years ago. It was like January 2015. So I ran to the toilet, vomited. I was like, is this what fitness is about? Wow. <laughs> and then I did three of their challenges back to back. Wow. Three 12-week challenges, so nine months of challenges. Wow. And then I was like, cool, I've done the challenge thing. Um, I've learned some skills, but I was definitely under eating, like for my output without really realizing it because I was Was plateauing. the goal fat loss at this stage? The goal or? was just fitness and also fat loss. Yeah. But I had... I didn't have the education there. So it was just a learning curve. And then I joined a gym. And then from there, I gradually got my confidence up with weights. It's just the typical story of like right. just figuring it out kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. But I think a lot of ladies really struggle with getting the confidence with the weights, 100%. right? 100%. And so where did that come from? Honestly, repetition, trial and error. Um, like I used to be so anxious about going into a full gym thought process people are watching me what am I doing how do I adjust this machine I'm being judged yeah like whether that's self-imposed or real who cares anyway so it was just a bit of a mindset shift of being like okay what if these people were looking at me who cares Right. right so that was just a as you get older and you get wiser gotcha and also like initially training in off peak times training in the females only area watching tutorials 
asking people for feedback. Um, taking a little bodybuilding book and writing my sets and reps and getting stronger and while I'm sitting there in between my sets watching a video of how to do something, like I just fully immersed in yeah. like, if I'm again, if you're going to do it, do it properly. Right. And then from there, when you, you know, when you're that consistent, like something's going to come from it. Like you're going to have those improvements and, you know, physique to show for it. And then that builds momentum within itself. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, yeah. I think that's a massive issue with most females is, and I get it all the time with our gym, yeah. is that, you know, it's like, oh, well, people are going to be looking at me. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what the machine it. does. Yeah. Um, but like you said, is that you need to be intentional about learning and educating yourself. It's yeah. like you're starting a new venture whether you were doing that with anything in life you're going to learn something about it so yeah and I'm sure it would be scary but like it would be worth it and my biggest thing whenever I have female clients is just like even the simple stuff like I'm like ask me how to adjust a leg extension machine ask me how to move the j cups in a squat rack like message me if you are not sure because I would rather you ask a question learn something than too hard basket avoid it and then nothing yeah. happens. And it's very easy for us in the industry to forget that people Take don't know granted. those simple things. Yeah. It's like, oh, you don't know how to move the leg extension. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's it's so simple to us. It's like plain as day. But yeah. to other people, that are coming into a world that's completely foreign. And surprisingly, like, even though I get that people can seem quite intimidating in a gym because we're all in the zone. Like, I'm sure when I've got my headphones in and I'm on a mission I black out like I don't know what's going on around me but yeah. if anybody asked me a question I would give them as long as they needed to help and I feel like that's that's what's yeah. like, that's the reality of it yeah totally yeah. so why do you think ladies specifically should be training like specifically with weights weights I mean so many benefits like obviously you want to getting stronger and improving your posture like um, improving your body composition mm. because you're kind of got more symmetry to you as well. And I mean, a lot of the goal is fat loss, but if you had a higher, you know, ratio of muscle to you, then you would be kind of in a better position anyways, mm. if you were to want to lose fat. Right. Yeah. I mean, so many benefits, bone density, mm. like, yeah, it's a big one. Yeah. And also the confidence that comes from lifting weights. Yeah. Like, how can you not feel like a bulse when you're squatting and deadlifting and benching? Yeah, Like, absolutely. it's a given. Yeah, Yeah, like, that's sure. empowering. I don't know. Surely someone else feels that way. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I think also one of, the, one of the big ones is, like, we're going to start to see an older generation, an elderly generation who are actually, like, standing up tall, strong, good yeah. posture, good bone mineral density yeah. because they've been using resistance training throughout their life. Yeah. It's, like, this awesome longevity tool that we're only just starting to harness. Yeah. Um, and also so much misinformation the internet is a good and a bad place yeah like you're not gonna become the hulk you know what i mean like i'm trying i'm trying really hard to yeah. gain muscle over here right yeah. like it's um it's not it's a slow and tedious process yeah like you're not gonna get that from your three full body sessions a week that's right at 80 percent intensity yeah. no i get that all the time yeah. someone comes in and then i have a consultation and they're like yeah you know i don't want to get like really bulky like you know and and i go to them like I've been doing this for like eight plus years hard yeah, trying hard. to get really big <laughs> and look at me. So it's not going to happen unless you're already genetically just exactly. quite bulky, right? Exactly. Um, which is not most. No. So, okay, let's run through some of your training now. Like what are you into? What are you training for? I know you've just done some competing, so you've yep. done a bit of bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, what's the goal now? Um, my current goal is strength powerlifting focus. Um, predominantly for the technique aspect, I really appreciate how technical it is, watching back videos, slowing things down, seeing how I can do better, having a strength coach who's super knowledgeable, Ben, um, I just really enjoy that process. Um, it's also a focus away from aesthetics, which was bodybuilding, and more into numbers and seeing I was here doing 70 kilo squats and now I'm here doing 90 kilos, like there's a tangible number that I can work towards, which is super motivating. And every time I go to the gym and I'm doing my mobility stuff and I'm doing my session, like there's a clear, like week by week increment, even if it's small, like I really enjoy that process. So it's very different to what I was doing before. Like I've got two full rest days where I try to only do like a small walk or something like that. And um, five days of 
focused around the big lifts with some accessory work to complement the big lifts. Okay, cool. Yeah. So they take about six, sorry, 90 minutes plus. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of time left. A lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. And I'd love to touch a little bit on the competing side of things. Yeah, go for it. Um, A lot of ladies... Especially once they've got, you know, they've sort of got the uh, the lifting bug, right? Mm-hmm. And they want to dive into some training. And they've been in it for like six months to a year. And they've built like a little bit of lean tissue. And then suddenly it's like someone mentions to them, like generally in like the corporate fitness world or like, you know, big bodybuilding gyms and stuff. Yeah. Oh, you should you should try competing. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. And then suddenly like a year into lifting, they're on a stage. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think... It can become, again, back to trendy, right? It can become like just the natural extension of, okay, cool, I've achieved X, Y, Z physique. Now this is my next goal. Or, hey, like being really lean looks like a good time. Like, you know what I mean? When I first started training in 2015, down, I think it was the end of that year, my first coach, this is the first year of me training, was like, you should do a competition. You've got a good physique for it. And like, I just shut that down because I was just... And I'm glad that I did yeah. because I think that would have been the worst thing for me. First year into training, my only goal being to compete. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying everyone's going to have a shit time doing that, but I'm pretty confident in saying most of them will if that's like, I just, it's so new. I think that the foundation should be laid with your habits, good healthy habits, rather than shifting straight into restriction and excessive amounts of training yeah you know what I mean yeah so I felt a lot better prepping like four years into training already meal prepping it's already part of my lifestyle it's not that far from my everyday thing that I'm doing and I chose to do like a 24 week prep a long time right yeah but I would rather a long time and slowly chipping away and having you know diet breaks and having less intensity until the very end than shortening the prep because it's convenient but it being super aggressive and then coming at the other end with like an unhealthy relationship with the whole thing yeah 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 for sure i think it's 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 kind of sad that coaches are suggesting that I know. to I, girls I, I, that's why i don't i didn't that bye-bye yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> Pretty much. i was yeah. just like i don't like this dynamic and it creates this yeah this idea that all girls should be striving to be on the stage and with that comes a lot lot of issues you know pressure and then if they are not coached by someone who's say evidence-based and knows this stuff often it leads to eating disorder cycles 100% binging cycles um, and then long term they're not even in the industry or they're not even doing training anymore or you know they've been burnt by it yeah Um, so I think exactly like you said you need to establish those foundations of healthy eating uh, regular training, making it a part of your life, making it just, you know, who you are yeah. before you even consider doing something like that. And I'd love to know what was the reason you actually jumped on stage in the end? So um, it was just another goal for mm. me. I wanted to see, especially like as a vegan, as someone who, you know, I'd gotten to a certain level, I was just like really interested to see how my body would respond and if I would be able to be competitive um, with the other people up there. And it was just another challenge, but I did go into it with like literally, and this is, it's so important to get a good coach, right? And not someone who's going to tell you what you want to hear, but someone who is just brutally honest because I really appreciated that part of the process before I even, I, we said, I was like, oh, I'm thinking of doing this. She literally sent me an essay of all of the negatives of competing you're going to, it's going to take away from your relationships. It's going to be your whole focus. You're going to be very selfish, all of this stuff. And I would much rather be told that and Mm. prepare for that and try to balance my other aspects of my life as well as possible than to then realize after, wow, like this was, these things were a negative, even though there was some positives there. So yeah, the basically, yeah, back to your question, it was mainly just another Another goal, um, wanted to see what conditioning I could get into and I wanted to do it slowly and try to see how how that went um, compared to a sm- like more aggressive right. prep. And um, my other thing was having a game plan after, doing yep. like a reverse out, which yep. I think was really important rather than just finishing and then being like, YOLO, what are yeah. we doing now? Like yeah. I think that's a bad place to be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So... What was your sort of start weight before your prep and then what did you get down to and then how has that sort of come back? Yeah, so 
It's a bit of a tricky one because in terms of where I started from, my output, as I mentioned earlier, I was running lots of classes. Mm -hmm. My steps were somewhere between 20 and 35,000 some days. That's insane. So like next time I do a competition, which I do plan on doing, which we can touch on, okay. um, I will be in a much different position. So I was quite small to start with because I was so active. I was eating, I think at one point I had my carbs up to like 350, 400 grams of carbs a day, like yeah. over 3000 calories. Yeah. And it still was, I was still sitting around the 61 kilo mark, mm -hmm. which is only three kilos off stage weight, wow. 24 weeks out. Yeah. Like that's okay, not, that's insane. like yeah. it's not, not ideal. Yeah. Um, like I loved what I was doing, but my output was just so high. So I just really had to try to manage that by not doing any additional steps, um, really being on top of like eating enough protein to avoid, you know, muscle loss and um, eating so much food to compensate for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think I didn't really consistently weigh myself, um, but I think by show day, I got down to 57 or 58. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I got my a DEXA scan to okay. test my body fat percentage. And I think I was at 15% two weeks after. Yep. So I probably assume on the show day, maybe like 12. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Which very for lean. bikini oh, yeah. is like where you'd want to be. You don't yeah. want striations. You still want fullness. Um, yeah. That's the body yeah. type for that division. Yeah. And so for yeah. the listeners, you're actually, there's, there's a whole bunch of different divisions in terms of when you compete, like you can compete in um, women's physique or women's fitness, fitness yep, and figure. then you've got bikini yep. and figure and things like that. Yep. So they've all got different shapes and different looks that they're Shrinking. wanting to see. Yep. Um, and bikini is a lot more sort of, I guess, a slender, more toned physique yeah. with a bit of muscle, but yep. not, you know, striated like abs and, you yep. know, veins and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, yep. actually, it's actually hard um, because you can't choose where you lose body fat from. And as you mentioned today, you said, oh, you're quite lean. And it's like, yeah, year round, my upper body is really lean. And when I wanted to do when I wanted to compete, like I started getting like ab veins and my arms were super vascular. Right. But my lower body wasn't coming in literally until the last six weeks. Interesting. So it was just like, you can't choose that. Like if you genetically just lose it all over, like you're at an advantage when it comes to competing. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't help that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Did you actually, so you started at a very high energy expenditure. Did you start to drop that as you went through yeah. Okay. yeah so it was just managing that yeah having monthly check-ins taking check-in photos once a week as we got closer um doing calipers once a month yeah so it was managing okay now my energy level's coming down how much food do i need to eat um where are we tracking where do we want to be four weeks out where do we want to be two weeks out etc yeah for sure So it's just a balancing act basically yeah yeah and then so let's just dive into the reverse a little bit. And this, I think, applies to any fat loss diet. Um, we run an eight-week rapid fat loss course at my gym. And basically, it's a huge educational program. They learn a lot throughout. But one of the huge things we ram home in the last few weeks is what are you going to do after this cut? Because, um, you know, the world, you know, we're very good at losing weight, but we're very bad at keeping it off. So we intentionally give a lot of education around okay what are you going to do once this is done yep. how are you going to keep this weight off what habits are you going to put in place um and what are you going to do to try and ensure that okay that weight does not come back you know within a year or within two years it actually stays off um and so a lot of that's revolving around okay we're going to bring you back up to a maintenance calorie intake. We're going to keep your activity levels still high. We're going to ensure that we're keeping the food relatively the same. So we're not including all these hyper palatable foods. We're including the same types of foods. We're just having more volume of them. And we're including those same habits that got you to that weight in the first place. Because at the end of the day, it needs to be that kind of eating style needs to be a part of your life. Absolutely. As opposed to like you're doing it for eight weeks. Um, so I think there's, Different value to doing these shorter term fat loss phases. Absolutely. But they have to be coached in a way that sets you up for sustainability. It needs to be, in, uh, as you called it, a phase. So, yep, now we're doing a fat loss phase. Now we can do a muscle building phase. There needs to be a plan after the plan. Mm. Otherwise, if you don't know what you're going to do and you haven't been doing it for long, you're going to revert back to what is comfortable, which is probably what got you into the position in the first place, which was unhealthy you know food habits or not exercising mm. um, and even going back to um, you know competing you need to know when you are competing that that is not maintainable and 
yes, whatever your year round thing is, like that's what you, you're comfortable with. Like you just need to go in and know like, cool, it's really nice. Like it was nice being lean for a short period of time, but um, not fun. I like food. My training suffered. I want to get stronger. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you need to have downsides. that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a good point. So what are some of the downsides of actually dieting? Dieting, like I, when I have a goal, I become obsessed. So I probably wouldn't have been as good company as I normally would be because what are you doing? Oh, cool. Yep. I'm walking and now I'm training and now I'm prepping and now I'm finding out what bikini I'm going to have. Like you're very selfish, whether you want to admit it or not. So I think like your whole life revolves around competing. Um, Your social life would suffer because you're not enjoying things as much to the full extent because in the back of your mind, you're thinking about prep. Um, So yeah, mood, social, I'm sure relationships suffer as well. Um, Training, like you're not going to be in a great position to get a bunch stronger when you're in a deficit. Um, So many downsides. So you just need to be aware of that. And also the fact that, as I keep saying, like, you need to know that the physique is short lived, enjoy it while you can, have an exit, exit plan after, get yeah. back to maintenance and all the foods. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, a, there's many downsides. Obviously, there's positives to it. Um, but I think there's actually a lot we can learn from even, say, like a longer term bodybuilding fat loss phase like you did yeah. and actually apply that to anybody just trying to drop a little bit of weight to be healthier right well i never i need to relook at what i wrote down because i wrote like a, a recap of it after i did it but i never dropped below 1700 calories until the last week mm-hmm. which is i can only go off my experience but hearing other people's experiences it sounds like they had a really shit time for a really long time yeah um and i'm like oh, i was in still eating you know grilled burgers every once in a while right. and still being able to incorporate things inflexibly because I had a good budget, yes, you know, absolutely. calorie macro budget for the day. And because it was slow and sh- like slow and steady wins the race kind of business, yeah. it never got to the point where I was like, obviously you get a bit hungry towards the end. Um, things like that are a struggle, but nowhere near what I've heard of other people say. Yeah. yeah. And I think I mean, number one, I think that's hugely individually dependent, of course, Absolutely. you know, depending on someone's energy output and yeah. just naturally what their, you know, BMR is. Yeah. However, at the same time, um, I think having a longer term prep like you did, like 24 weeks is a long a time, long time. Yeah. Um, you are allowed to go at a lot slower rate and by, you know, by definition of that, have a higher calorie intake and be allowed to be a little bit more flexible yep. long term, right? Yep. And I guess, you know, the only the only thing to be really wary of there is, you know, muscle retention. So keeping that muscle on during that, that yep. fat loss phase. Yep. Um, so that's probably a good chance for us to t- touch a little bit on what do you think some of the mistakes are that ladies specifically make when they're wanting to improve their body composition? And I think one of them would be probably not having enough protein while they're trying to lose weight. Absolutely. Like perception of I eat really healthy you can't see these because it's a podcast but I just did the speech marks quotation marks marks. (laughs) um marks um it's I eat really healthy but then it's like okay write down what you've eaten for the week or the day and nine times out of ten protein is don't don't get me wrong I'm not saying protein deficiency because it doesn't happen right. in a first world country really it's more so that if your goal is to retain and gain muscle and you're not eating enough protein which is very common and the carbs might be high or the fat ratio it's just obviously a little bit out of whack mm. that can happen and I think people also can go like too hard from the start throw everything at themselves really motivated for three weeks um, but then what it's not maintainable so then it's it doesn't matter so like person a they diet really hard three time you know for three weeks and then they go back off the wagon and then they go back on the wagon or person b chips away has a good you know higher calorie intake has some flexibility 12 weeks down the track still crushing goals yeah like there's the two stark differences that people go down yes and even though one might seem rewarding because you're seeing results quicker, yeah. 
who cares if you can't maintain them? Mm, for yeah. sure. Yeah, probably someone's personality type comes into that. Eh? Absolutely. Like, okay, like for yourself, Gemma, you're quite driven. You know, you're switched on when you do personality something. Personality type A? Right, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. So it's it's like, you know, for you, it's like, okay, cool. You could probably do a really aggressive fat loss diet yeah. and stick to it and just crush it. Like I can do yeah. the same. Yeah. Um, however, there's some people that that will just not suit for them. They will just, you know, they'll blow out or they'll they'll binge or they'll yeah. just drop out early or whatever the case may be. They might be better to, yeah, literally just, you know, take those low-hanging fruits and just, you know, yeah. chip away at small things that are actually going to make a make a dent. Yeah, um, absolutely. So what do you think the fundamentals of fat loss are for someone, you know, wanting to, say, just drop a little bit of weight and, you know, improve their body composition? Um, I think we can look at it from two different points. And this podcast is a little bit more body composition focused. You know, yeah. When we do talk about protein, a lot of the time it's, you know, people are saying, well, you don't need a lot, you don't need a lot. Yeah, cool. For the sedentary individual, yeah. the general population, fantastic. However, we're targeting a little bit more, you know, people who want to improve their body composition. They want to have some muscle, they want to be lean and have definition and be strong. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the fat loss side of things, what do we need to look at? Um, well, fat loss side of things, eating enough protein, maintaining that tick resistance training continuing to train um training the muscles right. and setting yourself like hypertrophy kind of rep ranges or strength rep ranges within that um and output doesn't have to be aggressive cardio but it could be steps yep so i mean sorry i'll add a fourth sleep and recovery can we just get back into that let's do it because it's all well and good to be smashing your training and eating really healthy. But if you're at a plateau, I think you need to start looking at, you know, when are you giving yourself some downtime to actually relax, recover, and that will improve within itself with when you go back into training. Right. Like, I don't know, I just feel like we just need to flip. Yeah. Like your sleep and your stress levels are just as important as your training itself. Yeah. I just see it time and time again. I'm doing all the right things. And then like I ha literally had a message from one of my um, clients the other day being like, oh, I just, I've gotten so much stronger at the shoulder press. And then I got her to send me her screenshot of her steps, of her sleep. And I know that she just moved away from a stressful situation into a house and all of her stress has come down and I was like, it's almost like, right. you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, good correlation Yeah, there. a little bit of a, but it's just super common. I just, yeah. I just think that we need to also emphasize that when it comes to fat loss. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and that's, in this day and age, it's a tough one to do. I know. Everyone's trying to hustle and like, you know, working hard and then the, the grind. Yeah, the yeah. grind and the sleep suffers. And especially in a fat loss phase, like I find the same thing for myself. It's like, I'm switched on when I'm in a cut. Um, I'm really productive, but it also means that yeah, often your sleep will suffer and then mm -hmm. there's definite downsides to not maximizing sleep in a fatless phase, you know, yeah. especially from a hormonal perspective, like from leptin. a metabolic yeah. perspective. Yeah. Um, so there is no substitute for getting good sleep in a cut. Yeah, and also um, obviously hormones with sleep and that can affect your satiety mm -hmm. and, you know, how obviously how hungry you are but also with protein like once you eat i feel like when you eat a more balanced meal i could eat unlimited carbs but if i eat a carb veggie protein rich well balanced nice plate me like plate model meal yeah, yeah. i feel sorry feel full for like two or three hours so i mean that's important with fat loss we're going back to the macros and the protein is is eating that way not only is going to work towards your goals but it's going to work towards how you feel yeah, and yeah. those those tips right there, that's a foundation you can carry into your eating habits long term. Of course. Um, I love the plate model in terms of the, the way I look at it is we, even though it's a plant-based diet, yeah. we still send to the plate around a protein source yeah. because of the satiety effects from that protein. Yeah, of course. Um, it's so essential. So, you know, increases the protein um, of the meal and then increase satiety, fill the rest up with veggies, whatever you want. Great. Fiber, um, loads yeah. up. Yep. And then when you're in a cut, okay, cool. You're going to reduce the calorie intake from, you know, carbs and stuff a little bit and maybe the fats, but then you're going to, you know, when you come out of that into maintenance or into a gaining phase, you can just keep the same plate model, but you're going to increase, you know, possibly the carbohydrates and the fats of yeah, that meal. Yeah, just increase the volume, increase the other. Yeah. It's just tweaking things no, it's when you go really through different good. phases. Absolutely. No, yeah. really good points. Okay, cool. So let's quickly move on to um, a couple of final thoughts here. Um, 
first one is I like to ask people, what do you think the, the vegan movement could do better yep. in order to spread the word without sort of pushing people away or turning people off? And, you know, what are some of the things we might be doing um, that are, you know, not so productive? Yep. Um, so I believe because what you eat is so is such a big part of who you are, like social things, eating out, etc. So I think that it can become your identity, which doesn't have to be a bad thing. It just I think there's just a level to it. So I definitely feel like I have gotten a bit confused along the way initially being like, how far do I want to take this? As in, OK, I'm eating plant based and I'm being conscious of the products that I buy. And it actually started making me a bit anxious about stepping like a wrong foot, basically, like um, getting stressed about that there's le- I have leather car seats, like things like that. Like I don't care about that now. Don't get me wrong. I wish I didn't have leather car seats, but I'm not going to – you can put a lot of pressure on yourself and I think that that pressure to uphold this perfect vegan image is off-putting to many people because if, if someone came – to a group and said I want to try plant-based and then there's eight people telling you the different things you need to do (laughs) you're going to be put off pretty quickly or you're going to feel like a failure so I think the biggest thing is to have less pressure on yourself of what you're doing wrong and just focus on what you're doing right whether that be starting a meat-free Monday whether that be having a plant-based lunch or dinner or snacks or switching your whey protein shake to a plant-based rice and pea blend you know what I mean like I my as I've gotten older and my care factor with the stress that I had initially with trying to be perfect with it um is unnecessary Mm. because at the end of the day I make the rules like how how strict I want to be don't get me wrong I haven't eaten meat super strict never really stepped a foot wrong but like how like the self-imposed pressure that I had on myself was unnecessary right so I just think that as a society like vegan society yeah being more welcoming and understanding and just commending people for what they're doing rather than tearing them down yeah i don't know if you've seen this but i'm in a lot of groups like um vegans of melbourne yeah um vegan girls and it can go both ways someone can ask a question about hey you know what is actually wrong with eating eggs if they're in your family's farm or hey why don't we eat um honey right right and these questions are probably just coming from like a well-intentioned place But sometimes those people get completely wrecked, right? And I don't like that because I I, like that makes me sad because this person is probably just confused because they don't see the connection or they don't see it being a big issue. And they can often be like shunned or like guilted. And it's just, we need to stop that because it's again, we're so privileged. That's right. And Ex, you know, someone who's maybe shunning someone for doing that four years ago were doing that. So it just comes back to empathy, mm. like upbringing, exposure. Like we just need to be more understanding as a society and just putting the positive vibes out there. So good. Yeah. Bang on. I think a lot of Bang. people try to take that moral high ground. Moral high ground. Like, yeah, I'm just not about it. Yeah. I've unfollowed people that are vegan that yeah. I feel are too judgy because yes. it makes me like stressed yeah and i think and when i've met vegans in person i've yet to meet like a horrible person never it's just online it's just people online and people want to project their little opinions and it's and it's really split in here's a lot of it it's like okay people that you know these people that are asking questions about honey or about you know um their, their friends eggs or whatever yeah it, they're doing majority of the things that are going to do the biggest benefit for exactly you know for the climate and yeah. for our health and for the animal welfare yeah and so us shunning these people or turning them away is just doing us a disservice exactly like okay let's think of a world where you know 70 percent of the people are you know positive about plant-based eating more plants there's that i'm not going to do the numbers i'm not good at math but <laughs> there's that world or there's the world of 10 percent 10 percent of people doing it really hard and not being accepting of the others yeah you know what i mean like if we're working off averages, the people that are just doing what they can overall, we're going to have more people making a positive change. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great way to look at it. Yeah. Alrighty. So we finished with some uh, quick fire questions. Give it to me. Alrighty. I'm ready. So I actually wrote them down, but they haven't refreshed on my page. So no. I'm going to do these off the top of my head. I'm um, <laughs> real simple ones. Okay. Tofu or tempeh? Tofu. Oh, 
All righty. I've had a bad temper experience. I need oh. to learn how to cook. What it. was the bad temper experience? I just made it too chunky <laughs> and I and I only cook in non-stick pans and I just, it was not a good time. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah you got to have some, you go to like Bali and have some of their temper. Yeah. Is I'm sure perfect. my life will be changed. It will be changed. All right. Absolutely. Um, another one was, what's your favorite Melbourne eating spot? If someone's going to travel to Melbourne, where should they go? Are we talking brunch or dinner? Oh, it's hard, isn't it? Real you hard. can give us one of each, hey? Oh, no. Like, so, <laughs> there's actually so many. Um, okay. There's on this road that we're on, there's a place called Veggie Bowl, and it's an all vegetarian, like Asian style food, and they have luxes. Yeah. And, like, I love a, like a curry luxa. Like a spicy really curry good, luxa. Really good. Really yeah. good. And they nail all of the veggie food there. Um, if I was going to go to Fitzroy, they have a deli, Smith and Deli, that's right. all vegan. Um, and they make some of the most amazing sandwiches, pastries and stuff like that. But honestly, I could talk for days about this. I, yeah. So, so I, I've been to Melbourne options. so many times and I've never gone to Smith and Deli. Oh, okay. You need to go. And I was I looking also it up. Smith and, um, Smith and Smith Daughters. And Daughters. Yeah, both. Great time. I was looking up Smith and Deli um, just yesterday and it was closed because of Australia Day. Yeah. And I saw the photos. I was, I was like, and I'm not going to be able to get there because I'm flying tonight. I'm so tonight. sorry. Um, oh, you're lost. <laughs> I'm back in July and I'm going straight okay. there. Okay, please do. Um, okay, cool. Favorite body part to train? Ooh, back. Oh, all right. I really like training. Oh, now it's a tie with chest because I like benching, but right. definitely like I like back. Is it because you're strong in the back? Yeah, I don't know. I just like pulling exercises and yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Po- anything posterior, yeah. I think I've done it's like the favorite body part is the one you're strongest in. Yeah, of course, because it's you, an ego hit doing yeah. the things that you're not as good yeah. at. Yeah. Or you get like a massive mind-muscle connection. Yeah. You know, and then you can really feel it. Yeah. Um, okay, and a book that someone should read, like your number one book. It doesn't have to be about any particular topic. It could more. be fiction. I wish I you read, don't read more. Much? Um, I literally just bought James Clear's book. Tom Habits. Atomic Habits. Yes. Um, I've been part of his mailing list for like five years oh, wow. and I've I've only flicked through. I need to up my book game. But it is so good for just his mindset in terms of habits, building habits. Um, even there's something that I read in there in my short time um, <laughs> about like the paperclip strategy of like rather than overwhelming yourself with doing all of the right things with a habit – just something small as having paper clips on a table and having two different jars and every single time you accomplish something that you really want to kind of drive home, you take one over and just that visual representation or just visual cues of, okay, we've got this goal, have it on your fridge, have it in your bedroom. Like just those things that you can really make like the front of your, forefront of your mind is going to keep you motivated and when the motivation's not there, you're going to develop the momentum and habits. Yeah. So yeah, James Clear, Atomic Bang. Habits. Oh, such a good book. Yeah. I think if you're going to, if you've got goals in 2020 and you're procrastinating or you want to achieve something big, Atomic Habits is the one to get. Yeah, definitely. Perfect. Okay, yeah. last one. Um, what's one thing people should do today that will improve their life and or the life of others? One thing that they need to do. Be nicer to one another. Open doors and smile at people even if you're not going to get anything back. I just think we can all benefit from that. I know myself, even like I go for walks to get my coffee every day and I say hi to everybody and I don't know how they feel but that makes me feel happy inside. And I just feel like if we did that all and just got out of our heads of being really stressed and our issues are, you know, the most important issues kind of thing. If we just took ourselves away from that and just appreciated one another a lot more, it would be a nicer place. Great way to finish. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, do you want to plug anything while we're here? Um, just plant-based PT. If you're looking for a personal trainer or online trainer in Melbourne, hit me up. All right. Yeah. yeah, cool. So I'll link all her Instagrams in the show notes and you guys can check that out. Awesome. But that is us. Time to go and... Eat. Boo. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, we're on here. We're done? We're done. Oh, How good was that? Gemma Mullins, everybody. You can follow her on Instagram. Definitely check her out if you're in the Melbourne area. I'm sure you took away some gold from that episode. Especially if you're not into weight training already, I highly encourage you, do something simple, get in there, do a simple full body routine 
one to three times per week. Get yourself started. Start to reap the benefits of loading your body with heavy resistance. As discussed, especially for women, this is so, so, so important and such a benefit to you and your longevity. We're talking bone mineral density. We're talking increased lean muscle tissue, which is going to change your physique. We're talking increased insulin sensitivity. There's so many benefits from weight training. So get amongst it. Get yourself a coach. Look at myself if you want online coaching or if you're in the Auckland area. Jim is in the Melbourne area, also doing the online coaching. So there's a ton of options there for you. I think we may have to get Gemma back on the podcast at some stage and dive further into the competing side of things. If you are competing at the moment or you want to compete in the future, let me know if that's something you're interested in and knowing more about how to get into contest shape. But for now, guys, I've got three things for you. Number one, jump onto veganbody.coach. This is where you can jump onto our mailing list, which is where I'm going to be sending all the upcoming interviews. If I've got a guest coming up that I want to ask some questions and I need your help with it, I'm going to email that group of people and ask them to send me through some questions. Number two, we're really trying to grow this Instagram channel. So please go over there veganbody.coach and give us a follow comments on some of our posts that helps the reach and the engagement of each of those posts and i would love it if you shared this episode on your story just take a screenshot of your phone right now tag me in it and i'm sure there's going to be some people that follow you that would love to listen to this episode and learn about how they can optimize their health their longevity their physique through strength training especially as a female lastly guys if you have any request for guests or someone you want to see on this podcast please let me know send me an email jackson at veganbody.coach or you can just flick me a dm on instagram i'd love to know who you want to see on this podcast we've got a whole bunch of guests lined up but if you've got anyone specific hit me up again thank you so much for listening i love seeing the view count go up on these episodes it means that people are getting impacted it means that people are changing their lives around their nutrition around their training this is what this thing is all about guys so go away prep some meals eat a stack of plants and go smile at someone 